Dave from DNA Reptilia here again. Today is the day we're going up into Abby's room with the FLIR to see what the actual temperatures are of her reptile enclosures compared to what she actually thought they were. Alright, like I said, we're up in Abby's room. She is actually in here. I'm not in here with out her permission or anything like that. She's just off to the side because the room is on a smaller side. But we're gonna see how Apollo's, her bearded dragon, her first reptile you got, mm -hmm. very first reptile, um, see how the heat lamp in the corner actually heats up the side and see what the temperature gradient is of the actual enclosure of this 40 gallon Exoterra? Yes. I don't deal with this type of enclosure very often, so... Brain fart. So... He's gonna be wondering what the heck's going on, because he just got put back in. But... Oh wow. He is... That's weird seeing him... Purple. But he's actually quite warm. He's 88 degrees. Hmm. On his cold spot. Okay, any guesses what the hot spot is? 102. Um, no, it's actually hotter than that. Oh, wow. 130, 140 on the very top. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, and he basks there? Sometimes, yeah. That's probably one reason why he doesn't. What, how many watt do you have up there? Uh, 75 for him? Get a 50 and we'll check again. Okay? Yeah, I have a 50 somewhere, I think. But that's... This is one good thing about this. Um, wow, it's actually quite warm in his enclosure all together. Mm. 90 degrees on his hammock. Wow. That down on the ground. Yeah, I would suggest uh, a 50 watt, and we'll come back and check. Now I'm wondering what Elwins is like, because he has a 50 watt. Oh boy. And he has no mesh in between his bulbs. So. Well, we're gonna find that out now. Because okay. when I attempted his hotspot when I was setting it up, it was like 140 or so, which is set, which. That's what Aki monitors need, so. Alright, now we're going to do Alduin's cage. It is her red Aki. She had this enclosure custom built to have a very tall front end. It was about 10 inches in the front and you got about 8 inches of substrate. Yeah. For tunneling. Yep. <laughs> um, glass doors. And it's a 50 watt. Yes. What kind of 50 watt? 50 watt, uh, just heat lamp? Basking bulb. Yeah. Basking bulb? Okay. And then the, um, UVB. Yes. Uh, 32 inch. Huh? I believe he's under his. He is. He woke up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Okay, over on... Oh boy. Over on the side where there is no heat lamp? They do like it warmer, but yeah. At 105? Mm. That's on the cork bark in the far yeah, back. I believe that. Um, cork bark that comes up towards the front is about 96. On top of the branches, the cork bark going on an angle is 101. That's his favorite spot. <laughs> It's probably the ideal temperature he really likes. Mm -hmm. Now, Alduin's backing up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. Okay. It's he mainly... doesn't recognize you and mm -hmm. he's going in. So. And where he was hiding was right down there where it's 97 degrees. Any guesses at the hot spot? 
165. Uh, you might want to change that. How high? Uh, 203. Oh, God. Right underneath the ball, literally. On the highest peak, Yeah. with the FLIR, it is 200, 3, 205. Mm -hmm. That's like within yeah. inches. And the bulb itself, I don't even want to know. What the heck? That's not. That's weird. Literally on the bulb is 216. Okay. That's... That's interesting. Let's check out. Oh, it's calibrating. 115 elsewhere, not on that peak. I mean... Yeah. Within like... Okay, that peak point is about an inch by two inches, and then it drops down to about 125 within a couple inches I know from there. That he, he sometimes is on top, not at that peak, mm -hmm. but usually he chills in the, the shelf underneath. Yeah, that one. Which is 102, 103. Wow. He's <laughs> yep. And the ground, let's see. It's in the 90s. So yeah. Interesting. And he you've had him for how long? Uh last year, April, so over a year. Over a year in this condition with the fifty watt. Yeah. Okay. So he's very he's a smart little sucker, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Got him um, visually trained to uh, know when food's coming. All right, up next is another Sea Serpents rack. This is the Hashin rack. It's the 18, I do believe. So let's see how this one is. I know I did Sea Serpents before, but not the Hashin rack. Um, give you a cricket's hole back. Oh, this is your uh, barking gecko. Yes. Nope, can't. I have to move the camera. <laughs> Alright. Barking gecko. Well, it's going to be almost the same, but this is on sand. Mm hmm. Going to pick. <laughs> She's 87 degrees on her tail. I'm pretty sure it's male, unfortunately. <laughs> wow, there's a big temperature difference. Okay, on the sand? 94? That's good. When you got set at? It's been a while. <laughs> well, thanks for your honesty. Inside the heights, 94. But there is a good gradient of temperature with the sand. Yeah. <laughs> sand is actually a pretty good gradient. All the way at the front is 10 degrees cooler. And mm -hmm. it's a slow. Let's see. Slow gradient, which is nice on sand. Sand does dissipate heat really nice. Mm -hmm. It just jump. It just ninety six. So all the rest of them should be fairly similar. Oh, it is big. Empty tub. All right, empty tub. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep, ninety seven degrees. So the sand is dissipating heat. Sand. And let's see where my finger is. What there? Well, four inches. So it's, I think they got three inch tape in here. I think so. So. Hog nose is in the corner. Oh, hog nose, yep. This is on Aspen. Yep. Eighty-seven. The hog nose is literally eighty-eight degrees. Inside the hide is um, 92. So there is a temperature difference because of Aspen. But you notice mm -hmm. with the Aspen, it drops off in temperature a lot faster. Because it doesn't dissipate heat, heat very well. So we're not even halfway, we're down next to the water and it's 84. And I think the whole rest of the bits can be all 84, yep. So that's good to know.
cool. Wow. I think we both were very surprised at some of those temperatures. Um, I mean, everything is eating healthy. You know, it's been up there for a while. But it explains to why some of the animals stay in certain areas that they do actually stay in. On Elduin's enclosure, it, there's a couple vents on the sides and the sliding doors in front and that's about it. So a lot of the heat stays in there so the ambient temperature is actually quite warm. Yes, there is an extreme spike in one spot but that's like six inches away from the bulb. Um, might be a little too warm, Abby agreed. So she's gonna try to get a little bit lower wattage and then we're gonna come back again with the temperature with the FLIR and I should check see what the temperatures are then. Maybe he might be a little better off. Who knows? He's been doing fine. He's been growing really good. So, and then Abby's bearded dragon. We what we did with that enclosure is I t I uh, laser cut some silicone, some really thin silicone, and actually laid it on top of the screen to actually help keep the enclosure warmer. Um, that was before she had a lot of the other reptiles. So his enclosure might be a little bit on the warm side, but he's doing fine. He's a puppy dog anyways. Abby lets him run around her room quite often. So it's like when I actually went up there, he was actually on the floor and he, she put him away. So I wouldn't accidentally step on him. So, But um, the FLIR, if you have lots of reptiles in one room, the FLIR will open your eyes. Um, it is worth the $200 that we paid for it. Um, at the information that we can literally see with a lot better accuracy. Um, it's eye-opening. So I appreciate you guys watching along and our adventures on, with the FLIR on our smartphone. Um, and uh, do us a favor, like, share the video, and please subscribe to our, our channel on YouTube here and hit that bell so you get notified when we upload a new video of reptiles, rodents that we breed, or whatnot. If you have any other suggestions of what we could use the FLIR for, write that down in the comments too. Let us know. Alright? So, until next time, we'll talk to you guys later.